Hello everyone, this is Sala and you are watching tutorials on JavaScript. This is our fifth part and in this part you are gonna learn something very important. You will learn how variable scopes work in JavaScript, right? To understand variable scopes is absolutely necessary in JavaScript programming and that would be a terrible mistake if someone learning JavaScript and don't take this topic seriously because a scope defines the visibility of variables and if you are not aware of the visibility of variables then you are going to try things out in your programming right so sit tight watch this tutorial and i am sure you are not going to regret it so in javascript there are four types of scope global local lexical and block and global local and lexical we are going to cover in this tutorial and the last one block scope we are going to discuss in the next tutorial together with let and constant Right? Before we go further and dig deeper into each scope, let me first define the term scope. A simple and easy to understand definition of a scope is a scope determines the visibility and accessibility of a variable. That's it. For example, if a variable scope is global, then your variable is visible and accessible everywhere in the program. Right, so that is our scope. Let's now pick one scope at a time and try to understand it and we will start the global scope when you declare a variable in a global scope then it is known as global variable and a global variable is accessible everywhere in your script let's try to understand global scope and global variable with the help of the example i set up an example that you can also see on the screen the example code is simple i initialize a variable and then we have a function so don't be scared of function it's just a code with its own block and we are going to learn them later on right so a function has its own block and programming we mark a block by using curly brackets so this opening and closing bracket is actually creating a block inside the script tag now inside the function block we are trying to log our variable and here we are calling the function a function need to be called that means in order to run this function we need to call it and here we are trying to log our variable again right so in the script tag we have an additional block now look at the creation of this variable this variable doesn't belong to any block it is placed directly inside the script tag right so when you define a variable or a function directly inside the script tag it becomes automatic global and can be accessed everywhere in the program like this variable is created outside of the function and we are able to read it inside the function block so the variable is visible or accessible inside the function and of course outside of the function so a global variable is accessible everywhere and in the browser you can see that there is no issue right so a global variable doesn't belong to any block and it's created directly inside the script tag right and it will make more sense when we look into the local scope so let's now jump onto the local scope unlike global variable a local variable is only accessible in the specific part of the program let's now look at the example on the screen you will notice a small change in the code now instead of creating variable in the global scope i am creating it inside the function and the function has its own block that we mark using the curly brackets right so this block is basically local scope to that function and when you create a variable inside the function block it becomes automatic a local variable and that also means this variable is only accessible inside this block and when you log this variable inside the function block or function scope it works but when you try to log this variable outside of its scope it will give you an uncaught reference error right so a local variable as i said earlier is only accessible inside of its own scope right and here in the output you can see inside the scope we are able to read the variable and when we try to read it outside of the scope, we got this uncut reference error, right? So now you have seen the difference between global and local variables. In JavaScript, a function usually defines a local scope and the variables that you create inside the function become local variables, right? 
So let's now jump onto the lexical scope. The lexical scope means the inner function scope can access variables from the outer function scope, right? And it will make more sense when we look at the example. In the example, you will see three functions, function O, B, and C. Function O is the outermost function, and you can call it a parent function. And in the scope of function O lies function B. And in the scope of function B lies function C. In the scope of function O, which is our outermost function, I initialized a variable. And this variable is actually a lexical variable because all the nested functions, regardless of their nesting level, have access to the variable defined in the parent scope. Like here, function B has access to the variable greetings and function C also has access to the variable. Right, so in lexical scoping, as I said earlier, the inner function scope can access variables from the outer function scope, right? But in lexical scoping, the opposite is not true. That means if I define a variable in function C, like this, so this variable is not accessible by function B and by function A, right? So the opposite doesn't work. And this is how lexical scoping is implemented in JavaScript. So now we have gone through global, local, and lexical scopes. And I hope now you have better understanding of how scopes work in JavaScript. The block scope we will study in the next part together with let and constant because let and constant are block scope variables. And I will also show you the usage of var and why do we avoid using var in modern JavaScript programming, right? So thanks for watching this tutorial. I will see you in the next part.